Company culture doesn't start on day one. It starts long before day one. Yet for most business owners, they don't realize the importance of culture until they start to, to grow and the team is not aligned with the vision of the business owner. The wheels start to fall off or they need to find new ways to recruit and retain uh, top, top, top tier talent. Hello, my name is Barry William Maglidity, CEO and founder of The Game Changers, and we help business owners to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. And today I wanna to speak to you about the importance of company culture. Now, many business owners that I see and many that come into our program, once we start working with them, they start to realize that they have many staff members that are not quite aligned with the vision, the mission, and the values of the business owner. And it's not something that necessarily we think about starting. When we go to create a business, we're thinking about creating a product or an offering, finding a market, and bringing sales to the door. We're not thinking about this thing that's called culture, this thing that's called vision, mission, and values. And until we get much bigger, we have a bunch of employees and we need to find a new way of motivating. We need to find a new way of inspiring them into uh, performing at a high level and serving our clients the best way that they can. At The Game Change, we have five uh, core values and they're in the acronym of HEART. Now, the main reason they're in ac acronym is because uh, I tend to have the best memory uh, at the best of times. And so having them in acronym actually helped me remember them and be able to relate them to something when we, when we began. And also too, for us, we believe that heart should be at the center of everything that we do. And so our, our core values, uh, number one, H, have fun. We believe the business should be fun. I see so many business owners that take things way too seriously. And I know certainly for me, for a long time, I was so serious in the way that I operated business. And I woke up one day and realized that if I wasn't enjoying what I was doing, what was the point? If I was slaving my guts out just to get a paycheck at the end of the day, which back then wasn't a very big paycheck, what was the point of doing things? And so I started to realize that everything that I wanted to create or achieve through business came down to having more money, more time. But ultimately what it came down to was having some sort of an emotional experience. And so I started to realize that I could start to, to cultivate and captivate those experiences right now, rather than waiting to the end. And fun was something that I thought about bringing more into the business. And so that's why our core value, the first value is have fun. The second one, E, is everyone contributes is that I wanted to build an organization uh, unlike a lot that I'd been uh, involved with in the past where they had almost this kind of military type dictatory structure where you know the, the top dictated to the bottom what needed to be done, when needed to be done, how it needed to be done. And it meant that you had many employees whose talents were really not being utilized because they were being dictated of how they should show up and how they should do things. And you also had a lot of people that were very quick at <clears throat> you know, making excuses or justifying or validating their specific actions or approaches. And so for me, I felt that having a culture where everyone contributed, everyone was involved in the conversation, that rather than having this top tier, bottom down approached uh, management structure, we had more of, a, a, of a, a circle moving out so that everyone was more on the same, same level. And so at that point in time, we removed timesheets, removed auditing of, of, of team members times. We helped them become super, super clear of what were their KPIs, what was the vision of the company we're trying to create? Where are we going? What's our mission? What were the goals we're looking to achieve in the next 10 years and how they could best align to those? And there was a huge shift in our organization to where we now operate 100% virtually. I've got team members all over Australia, uh, throughout the Philippines, in Indonesia as well. We operate 100% virtually. We don't track their time or what they're doing, but we are very much uh, KPIs and results driven which allow us and them to understand whether they're on the right path or off the path of achieving the ultimate vision of the business. A stands for always a cause, is that as a coaching organization, we see many clients that come in that are playing uh, an effects game. They're an effect of the environment. They're an effect of the current situation. They're an effect of their past partners or past employees of why they're achieving certain things that they are. But what we know is that when we're operating in life being from effect, we're not able to control the situation or take charge of the situation because we're, we're virtually saying that it's not us, it's something outside of us. Yet when we come from cause, when we own and take responsibilities of everything, and at the point in time of recording this, we're currently in the middle of COVID-19. And uh, it's interesting to see a lot of people we speak to on prospecting calls, some are at cause and like I'm ringing up because it's, it's time for me now to grab both hands on the steering wheel and drive this thing through. And I realize that what I've been doing at this time is not working. And there's other prospects that are like, hey, like I'm just here to get some free advice. You know, I've got no idea what I'm doing or what's going on, but do, you know what? What I've been doing is working. I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna fight for that, I wanna keep that. And they're not willing to change things around. They're coming at effect, blaming COVID-19 for the disruption in the business, which to some degree you can understand. 
But the reality is, is blaming something outside of us lacks us having accountability, lacks us having control or being able to do something with it, as opposed to realizing, well, yes, COVID-19 is there, it is affecting the business, yet I right now, the decisions that I make will affect the outcomes of the business tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. So that's why always at cause is a really important value for us. And you know, these values are also values that we instill upon our community and how we choose who we let into our community uh, on the prospecting sort of calls as well. R stands for realize our potential. And this is really uh, from the notion that it's not my responsibility as a business owner to uh, you know, show everyone their weaknesses or their shortfalls or you know, encourage everyone, inspire everyone. Like absolutely that's part of my role. But I also believe that each of us have a responsibility for realizing our own potential. Each of us have a responsibility for realizing that how we're playing the game of business, how we're playing the game of life, relationships, finances, whatever it is right now, is how we're playing right now. Yet there's also a possibility for us to be, be realizing a greater potential and play a greater game in those areas. And we only have to look at the past to see that you know who I am right now, who you are right now, is very different to who we were six months ago, 12 months ago, five years ago, 15 years ago. And so we have a responsibility to realize our potential. We have a responsibility to chase our own growth, to chase our own education. And us as an organization, you know, each of my staff and each of our clients have a responsibility to own the education, the growth, and realizing their own potential as we do have to support them in that journey uh, as well, which has really helped us to move from that kind of hierarchical structure, leadership down, to more of a flatline structure where, you know, I have what I want to say is an organization full of entrepreneurs. So the entrepreneurs inside of an organization, they're not out there necessarily doing their own thing, but they very much have the empowerment, the skill sets, the decision-making opportunities within the organization to, to, to be ran with and to learn from their mistakes rather than being dictated by myself or my operations manager what they should be doing uh, all day, every day. The last value, T, stands for together we grow or together we win is what a lot of our clients say because what we've realized is that uh, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. We have a community of over 100 business owners from around Australia, around the world, and for many years, we ran this one-on-one -on -one coaching model and it worked very, very effectively, but it was also very frustrating for our coaches because they were having the same conversations over and over with different clients. Now, although we record and systemize a lot of our training, there were still a lot of questions that were coming up, but also what we're realizing is that many of our clients were brilliant and had a lot of knowledge in certain areas, but other areas, not so much in their business. And so we started to introduce this idea of what if we ran some one-to-one -one because it's important that business owners get specifically what they need for where they're at, but what if we also introduced this aspect of collaboration? What if we introduced this aspect of one-to-many? And that was where not only did our business blow up, but, but the clients, their businesses blew up as well because all of a sudden they felt that they weren't just alone. They didn't have, just have a coach or a couple of coaches. They had a whole entire community offering feedback, offering insights, offering suggestions for where they're at. And, and likewise, they were able to offer their suggestions up, which meant that together we could grow a lot faster because uh, they were able to, to share things where they'd overcome them and save other people that maybe at that stage overcome them a lot faster. Because let's be honest, you know, regardless of whether you're a plumber, regardless of whether you're a, a yoga studio, business is business and growing business, the same principles apply. The difference is the niche, the difference is the offer and how you deliver that, but the same fundamental principles apply in how you grow a business. And this is why I shared that, that it's really important that you know before even day one of your business, you should be very intentional around the type of culture that you wanna create for your company and, and to make sure that that, that uh, permeates every area of your business. For us, when we hire on culture, they're a better fit. You know, Hire the smartest people that are aligned with our culture, they're much better fit than someone who's just intelligent but's not the best fit. And I've learned that lesson so many times before. You know, when we have performance conversations based on the core values and the culture of the company, they're far better than pulling, calling someone out because they're not doing the right job. You know, because the culture is now so strong, they're able to see where there's a misalignment there. And also people's values change. When they come on board, they might align with the culture, but as they grow and develop, their values might change. There's been a number of my staff members that have left and exited to go and start up their own businesses and potentially even in a competing field. Yet we're fully supportive of that because I'd much rather someone leave to chase their dreams than to stay and not support ours as well. So I think it was uh, Richard Branson that said, I'd much rather uh, train someone so well they could leave than not train them so well and them stay. 
So my invitation is to spend some time if you haven't already got a solid culture in place. And even if you do, spend time ongoingly curating this. You know, for us, we spend two days around vision, mission and values and goal setting every year. And every quarter we spend a day diving down and questioning whether or not our values, whether or not our culture is at the standard it needs to be. And recently, uh, you know, recently we let go of a staff member because we noticed over the past month or so, there was a bit of a separation in where they were going and where we were going. And it was showing up in the behavior, but more importantly, or, or more uh, noticeably, it was showing up in the rest of the team because they could feel things as well. When you have a team that is all vibrating around the same frequency of values and vision and mission, and one starts to step out, if you don't do something about it, or if you're not uh, quick enough to have conversations around the culture, you will start to notice it significantly affect your businesses. You know, we've, been, we've had a number of clients share with us that when they've removed a staff member they felt wasn't the right fit, their whole entire organization grew, their whole entire organization started to flourish even more because everyone could align even stronger with the vision, mission, and values. So hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, please like it, let us know that you liked it, uh, and also comment, what was your number one takeaway out of today's uh, short clip? Hope all's going well and look forward to sharing with you again on the next one.